What is up, everybody? We are back, and today we have that special guest, my mother, all the way from Tennessee, and we are going to answer some of your questions about obsessive compulsive disorder. And we want to start this video by saying we are not therapists. This is not a guide to treatment. This is just our experience as a mother and as a son growing up with OCD and anxiety. So we'll get right into it. We had our first question on YouTube from The Large Toast. And it says, as a mother, were you able to notice any signs before I told you about what was going on? Well, we really didn't. Um, the signs that we saw as in him walking in and out of the door and at second grade and third grade, in and out, in and out, I said something to my husband and he said, he's just being a kid. So we left it at that. Um, and it just got more intense and more intense and we realized that something wasn't correct. And at that time, in the early 90s, there wasn't a lot of information about OCD. No, I even had to educate the teachers. They said to me, I had no idea why he kept erasing and erasing and erasing and he had the right answers. Or I have no idea why he would write all his answers down the side of the paper. They had no clue. So that was my input on that question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the next one was Greg Garcia. And it was how to make someone comfortable with OCD. And this is an interesting question. So It's a tough question because I always thought that when I interrupted his routine that it made him more stressful because he would have to keep doing the doggone routine until he did it to his mind's OCD's perfectness. And those routines are the compulsions. Those are the compulsions, yes. And so, you know, there were things like him getting dressed. If he touched his pant leg to his shoe when he was getting dressed, he had to start all over. Couldn't get out of the car door without spinning around several times and getting in and getting out. So, uh, you, it's real. I think the best thing that's happened at, at him being 30 years old is finally finding uh, a, a OCD psychologist that's helping him with this ERP study because back then all I did was read books about it and we did have doctors that we saw and they did help but then unfortunately they were so good they went to New York they went to Washington so. and that, that's a tough question to ask you because I think the real goal of treatment of OCD is teaching the child to be okay being uncomfortable. So the goal is not really going to be to make them comfortable. It's going to be making them okay with being uncomfortable yeah. because the ultimate goal is to resist those compulsions. And that's when a lot of discomfort is going to come up. So is the resisting of it. Yes. The resisting. So it would just be getting them into the right type of treatment. Exactly. Exactly. And supporting them in every way that you can. They, they can't help it. It's an illness. You know, it's not a choice, so they wouldn't choose it. Believe you me. Thank you. We appreciate that. Um, the next one was from HS on YouTube, and it says, was it strenuous? Oh, more than... <laughs> you know, when your child is having troubles, whether it's speaking, reading, walking, and you can't help them, it is so stressful that I don't even know if that's the, the right word, but you always want to be able to help your child do anything, and... OCD is just one of those, there's no right or wrong way to do it. It doesn't give you directions. Kind of a lonely thing. It is a alone. very lonely thing. Um, the same, same person asked, do you believe it made your child empathetic and creative? Well, my son was creative from Jump Street. He, any cartoon he watched, he had to get in costume. Now, whether that was from OCD or not, I don't know. Um, whether the creativity came from OC, I don't know. But as far as empathy, I'm a very empathetic person. Animals, doesn't matter, being alive, I'm, you know. So I think empathy, you kind of learn from your family life. You, you, you teach them empathy. I would agree with that. And, and the creativity part, um, people with OCD, they think, they analyze, they really can go into their brain and try to work something out. And I think that lends itself to being creative. It could very well be. Um, another question that we got from YouTube was from CT. 
what is a hidden noticeable thing someone without OCD would not understand? Like, so I think this question is really like, is there something that you could notice that would kind of tell the tale that this person has OCD? Well, now in my son's case, everybody, some wash hands, some hoard, some do this or do that, but his was over and over. Repetition. He, repetition. He couldn't shut off a night switch without flipping it however many times his brain told him he had to do it. He couldn't walk out a door. It'd be so frustrating because the door, you know, you're waiting 10 minutes for him to be able to get up and go somewhere, putting a glass down and up, down and up, down and up on a table. I mean, it was, it was Strenuous. hard. <laughs> and this poor child went till he was in third grade and, and I'd lay with him at night and he would read book. We'd read books. He would never go to sleep, never go to sleep. And I, that was frustrating as you can imagine. Then he finally just exploded and he told his OCD, I don't care. The OCD told him, if you let your mother know what's going on, she may not be there tomorrow. Your dad may die. Your sister's going to die. Something bad's going to happen. So you can't tell them. It's the magic thinking. And he finally told me, and it finally all made sense. And the very first thing our doctor did, our psychologist did, was to make sure it wasn't, um, uh, what's that? Schizophrenia. Schizophrenia. Something more, right. um, more in depth. Something In other words, bit. like he said, is there, do you see somebody telling you this? Is there somebody? No, this was, Brian said, no, it, it's in my mind. Well, it's hard for a child and to explain. And that makes the difference between schizophrenia and OCD. And it's just difficult. A doctor doesn't want to misdiagnose you. So they really do their due diligence before they actually put a diagnosis on Absolutely. It. And some doctors aren't really, they say they're OCD, but they just don't know. And uh, I think that that's either. kind of the moral of this whole video is if you, to, to really help your child with OCD, it's to do your research and, and find them a doctor that they can talk to that understands the treatment of OCD. And more recently, ERP, ERP. the exposure response prevention, because that is the key to dealing with the anxiety spikes and dealing with, with OCD, there, it's, there's really no no better treatment than that. No, so. if we'd have known that when you were a child, it, it wouldn't have progressed till, you know, I mean, you still would always still have it, but you learn to live with it and not let it control you. Yep. Well, I appreciate you jumping on here today. I know it's not everybody's <laughs> favorite thing to do, but I'm sure our viewers appreciate it. And like always, like this video so other people can find it. Leave me a comment. Um, we hope that this helped somebody. And, and like always, subscribe. God bless you all.